As Oxfam, we've been uh, on the ground since the 24th of September. We witnessed as a fairly massive escalation on September 23rd, uh, where uh, the number of deaths and injuries and and uh, that occurred that day was equal to the entire 34-day war in July 2006. And we saw a massive influx in the number of internally displaced persons. Uh, from the 24th of September uh, till about seven days later, we went from 300,000 uh, approximately displaced persons within Lebanon uh, to over 1.2 million, uh, which is the number that we're currently at right now, or approximately 1.2 million. So our teams are doing their best uh, to reach all of those that are in need of support uh, in the government organized collective shelters. Uh, but it does feel like a, a drop in the ocean because uh, every day the numbers are increasing uh, quite rapidly. Mm. In terms of those people who you are supporting, those people who have been displaced, where are they sheltering? What situation are they then going into? I, I mean, they were already in a fairly dire situation uh, to begin with, uh, whether they had been exposed to uh, some form of the conflict over the previous 11 months, uh, Lebanon, uh, Entered the entered the conflict the, the day after October seventh, uh, but before that, Lebanon was going through multiple crises. So a lot of the people that were displaced had very little means and left with pretty much nothing. Uh, and their situation is ex extremely dire. Uh, they have uh, sheltered in schools in public buildings. Um, very recently, a lot of organic movements have sprung up. Whether uh, restaurants have opened and pubs to allow people to shelter. Uh, and massive concert halls. Uh, it's the, the, the number of the displaced is increasing so rapidly day by day that um, many of the shelters are already uh, have reached full capacity, which is something that the government uh, has been warning us about for the past two days. How does Israel's ground operation change the game for the people there in Lebanon? I mean, that's a question we get asked often, um, regardless what the military tactic is, whether it's an increase in airstrikes or, or a ground invasion, what we are seeing is a rapid increase on a daily basis of those that are being displaced to flee the violence. Um, the ground offensive currently has impacted many villages that are already pretty much in, in, in inhabitable because of the 11-month uh, offensive. Um, so for us, uh, as an aid organization, uh, what our concern is, is with the after effect more so than with what's actually happening on the ground. I mean, for, for us, it's when we've witnessed an increase in the airstrikes or with the threat of a ground offensive and even the beginning of a ground offensive, people are obviously incredibly scared of what, what tomorrow might bring. Mm -hmm. Uh, because each day feels like it's worse than the one that, uh, that passed. So maybe people that would have stayed in their village uh, notice that, okay, if it's a ground offensive, we know what's going to happen. This is definitely going to result in an increase in violence, and maybe we should leave now. So that's when you've seen the numbers go from the hundreds of thousands to going over a million in the span of seven days, which is an extremely large number to cope with, especially for um, a government that is in a caretaker capacity. Uh, we currently don't have a president, so we don't necessarily have a fully functioning state currently. Yeah. And aid organizations, both local and international, are doing their best to cope with what we're seeing on the ground. Mm. As you said earlier, Lebanon has faced so much in recent years and this escalation of violence is really compounding the hardships that were already being experienced. What is needed, Bashir, from the international community here? I mean, foremost, for, for, for the international community, I think a ceasefire is becoming... Um, an absolute necessity uh, uh, with each passing hour because the escalation is is the escalation of violence is um, I don't want to use the word unprecedented I've used it a lot and it, it feels almost uh, useless at this point but with with every new uh, escalation for the conflict at a regional level we felt it in Lebanon um, so it's it's becoming yeah it's becoming extremely difficult to to kind of forecast what might come next.